Hi, I'm Mikhail Yulaberry, and I have autism. Now, what autism is, is it's a developmental disorder that um, affects the um, brain's ability to understand abstract concepts. Facial expressions, <laughs> all that, eye contact, and uh, pretty much picking up on the cues on the spot. Nope, I am not that quick, but not because I can't understand it, it's just I wasn't born able to do that. Nope. When I When I was a kid, you see, if you stared at me, I'd be very scared. I don't... I didn't like it. I didn't like it when you stared at me. Why? Because I didn't know what the heck you were doing. There was too many things I had to read. You were staging me. It was... or that's what other people were doing. But they weren't doing it on purpose. I know that. I know that. You guys were just trying to connect with me, but the problem was I didn't understand what it meant. It was very overwhelming. Yeah, put the little kid on the stage, expect him to dance. What, what, what do you want me to do? I literally have no idea what you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's a code. A code that you're trying to force down my throat! By nature, my brain can't read it. Have to understand how these mannerisms work. It's a part of life. This is how you socialize. This is how you communicate. So I had to learn what certain expressions meant. Look in the mirror and do the most one of the hardest things that we also had trouble doing. Understanding our own expressions. You wonder everybody what's what's with the monotone voice or the limited or the limited stilted expressions. Well, we we can't compensate that either. It's too abstract. You can't visually perceive it because there's too many signs hidden beneath it. It means something else. When you can't understand abstract, then how do you think? How do you compensate? Well, I am very visually perceptive. I can see things in my mind, like the way, uh, like a virtual reality world. You could understand, like, the graphics, uh, understanding, like, where the details are, where do they connect, how does this connect to this. I did if it's not just, like, like, see, like, you think it might be, like, a room, but no. I can understand, like, like, what this mechanism will do here. Is it a lever? Is it a pulley? Is it a hinge? How is it connecting here? What was the shape of it? How does the details apply to this detail? The, in the past, how many times have I seen it? These are all things that I can see in my head. They're little details, more virtual. This is exactly the way... Ow. Ugh. Anyway, this is the way I can, um... Sorry, siren. Anyway, this is just the way I see things. Anything I do has to be concrete, something I can work with, something I can move with my hands. Another trait of autism that can also be leveled out is a uh, sound perception or sensories. Like in a room, you can understand that if you're crowded and a lot of, with a lot of people and there's a lot of movement going around, um, this is very stressful to us. Now, you may think it may be normal. you just like, it's okay, it's just a little bit of noise. Well, no, 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 not to us. It piles, it stacks, it gets really severe and it pulses into our brains uh, and it hurts. It hurts. It's too many senses. Too many things going on at once. It hurts us. We have to. See, we can feel and sense everything that's going on. That it actually does cause us pain because you know that's how we perceive things. We have to visually interpret everything, and when there's too much of it, sound wise, visual wise, it's all gonna hurt because it's too much for us to take in all at once. So you may probably be wondering. That sounds like, uh, well, how do you cope with it then? What we usually like to do is called self-stimulation. Now, that's not what you probably think it is. What it is, is that I have to apply pressure to my body or move my body in a certain way in order to feel relaxed, such as applying pressure to my face with my fists or spinning around in circles or rolling on the floor or uh, squeezing it, like, you know, little squeeze toys. Any of that. Spin, fidget spinners, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to get our brains able to balance out and with our own senses so it's able to relax us because we're overwhelmed. It's too much overflow and this is our way of relaxing. And I know it might sound weird or maybe look weird, but that's just how we're trying to relax. Because in Hans' arm, it's probably just strange about what the heck we're freaking out about, but 
that's just it. It's me saying over to you, but it's painful to us. It really is. It's painful. You're probably wondering how am I able to talk? How am I talking to you right now? How am I able to communicate? Well, this take this took me ten years. Yeah. I had to really study hard. I really had to understand, build up on it. Part of my development, I can do it. Some autistic people are not that lucky though. Some of us can be very on a certain scale depending on like what things are more difficult than others. And yeah, these things can take longer. You see, despite what they say, High functioning spectrum, low functioning spectrum, it's not like a level. It's not like a like from low to high. No, 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 no. What it is, is more like a pie. A pie graph. Think about that. Except the pie graph branches out. And the, and the different branches, depending on the length, represent the severity of a certain trait. Now that sounds interesting, doesn't it? Each little branch could be different for different types of autism. Yep, that's how it works. There are different ways of how people perceive things in a similar way, but their traits all can depend on the level. You're probably still wondering, this is a lot of, to understand, as in, how do you really know if I really have this? How do you know that I'm just not making it up? Well, here's the thing. Just because you can't see it, that doesn't mean it's not real. There are different ways to look at the world. Some disabilities, or like visible traits, sometimes I feel like the one that you have to notice as well is our behavior. That's a visual trait. We're gonna seem different, but it's not just because we don't understand certain things, it's because we're trying to cope with it in our own way. What you probably may be thinking, if that's the case, then how the heck are you supposed to socialize with us? Well, the same way you, the same way you socialize with any person. You know, you talk to them and get to know who they are as people. And the same thing way you do with any other disability. Study the symptoms and you try to recognize the behavioral traits. We're basically like anybody else in terms of not how we access the world, but what we're doing when we're trying to access it. We're trying to live our lives and trying to find ways to make ends meet. The autism is a it's an official condition. It really is. And I'm not sure if there is ever going to be a need for it to never need to be a thing. Why? Because the world really does need different minds. I don't care if there's a, a cure or not. No. Because that's what needs to be pursued. With the way we think, no matter how much we get on, on your nerves, we can adapt. And we're always adapting. We all are. But just because we're doing it in a different way, that doesn't mean we're any less different inside. We are trying to build our lives up. So, all I can say is, communicate. Take the time to understand. Because the best gift I can believe you can get is a new way to look at things. A new way of thinking. A new way of perspective. A different way you can exchange and share with another person. And that, to me, is a gift that you should always treasure. I'm Mikhail Uliberry, and I was autistic before it was cool.